Unfortunately, abuse happens and sometimes that's emotional abuse within a marriage. I've got five ways that you can heal a marriage after emotional abuse. Stay tuned. Unfortunately, the abuse happens. We hurt each other. I love the way Desmond Tutu put this. He said, we are all broken. And from that brokenness, we hurt each other. It's going to happen, right? Even in a marriage, this is a place where you should experience love and acceptance and joy and bliss and all that great stuff that you got married for in the first place. But because we're human, we tend to hurt each other and emotional abuse can happen. Now, I'm not justifying or saying that it's okay to emotionally abuse someone. But the topic of this video is how are we going to recover from that? Here's five quick strategies for how to recover. Number one is to focus on self-care. This is where you have to start. Because regardless of what other people are going to do in your life, you can take immediate steps toward taking care of this. Getting number one back on track. Now there's several things that you can do that are very practical. Number one, get enough sleep. Two, eat a balanced diet. Three, regular exercise. We're talking good aerobic exercise to get your heart pumping at least three times a week. Number four, prayer and meditation. Having some time to just quiet the noise, you know? All that noise that's going on in your mind, you can quiet it down. Meditation, yoga, exercise, those kinds of things are really going to help. Take care of yourself. This is really important in order to recover from the emotional abuse. The second of our five strategies is to practice forgiveness. There's a lot of misconceptions out there about forgiveness. Forgiveness is not saying that it was okay, because sometimes it's not, right? Being abused is not okay. That's not what we're saying with forgiveness. Forgiveness is not letting someone off the hook for their misdeeds or their crimes or their sins. You don't have that kind of authority. Forgiveness, I like the way one of my colleagues put this, forgiveness is giving up our demand for a better past. Ooh, that's juicy. Write that down somewhere and think about how you've been hanging on to some of the past offenses. Practicing forgiveness means that you're going to let go of those in order to open up your hands to do the other kind of work that you're going to need to do as you move forward with recovery. Forgiveness is also one of the nine powerful principles that help us to save a marriage. I did another video, How to Save a Marriage on the Brink of Divorce. You can link to it right up there in the card. Cue that up to watch right after you finish this video and you'll get some other great ideas. Now the top two requests that come into my office when couples are wanting to heal their marriage, trust and communication. Those two things are so important and I think if we have effective communication, we can build the trust. So number three on our list today of strategies for recovery is to improve your communication skills. This is something you can do together as a couple. But even if your spouse isn't on board yet, Here's something that you can start with immediately. Listen to understand. Let's talk about those two words real quick. Listen. Incidentally, in the English language, that word has the same letters as the word silent, which I think is a coincidence, but it's kind of helpful because you're going to just quiet the noise in your mind for a minute and listen to understand. That's our goal. Understanding and agreeing are not the same thing. And a lot of times when you start hearing something from your spouse that you don't agree with, you stop listening. Well, turn it back on. Keep listening with the goal of understanding. You want to make sure that what you get from them is exactly what they intended to send you. And communication is fraught with difficulties. We've done some other videos about that as well. You can find those in the Positive Relationships resources here on the channel. Got a whole playlist for that. That brings us to strategy number four. Choose love. I did a whole book on this. It's called The Love Choice. Here's the crux of it. Every interaction that we have with our spouse, 
is going to fall on one side or the other. I don't think there's a neutral option. I think every interaction will either be a love choice or what's the opposite? A hate choice. Abuse is a hate choice. And, and it could be a little or a lot, but I think it's going to fall on one end of the spectrum or the other. When we see it as a choice, it actually empowers us to make that choice because until we see it as a choice, it's not. Did you follow that? Until we see it as a choice, it's not. How have you been showing up with your spouse? Now, if someone abuses me, I'm more likely to react in a hateful way toward that person. Resist that inclination because you still have a choice. And even if someone comes at you with hate, you can respond with love, whatever that looks like. You ask yourself, what is the most loving thing that I could do? And you're going to be in a good place if you'll choose love. Strategy number five, I saved this one to the last. It's probably one of the hardest ones to implement because of pride or taboos or culture or whatever it is. Get some help, some therapy, some counseling, some coaching, someone who can assist you to get outside of your own head, maybe help the two of you communicate better, give you a forum where you can actually start solving problems, and please use discretion. Unfortunately, the research shows that some people who go into a therapeutic setting uh, actually get worse. Some get better, some stay about the same. The research is really interesting in the outcome studies that have been done here. I think what you're looking for is a coach or a counselor who resonates with your values, who understands your purpose as a couple, as a family, and who will support you in applying the right kinds of principles to get there. A couple of years ago, there's a, a popular channel on YouTube called Kids Snippets through the Board Shorts channel. And they actually filmed an episode about marriage counseling in my office. I wasn't in the film, but you'll see my office. Go take a look at it. I think you're gonna enjoy that one. I hope you found that helpful. There are so many other resources available. The next video up is how to save a marriage on the brink of divorce. You'll get some of the same ideas, but we're gonna dig a little deeper into it. So I hope you enjoy that video as well.